A short time from now, a moment of healing more than 120 years in the making. The city of Wilmington, North Carolina, is laying to rest Joshua Halsey. He is the first of an untold number of African Americans killed during the Wilmington Massacre of 1898. A group of white supremacists attacked Wilmington on November 10th, an insurrection overthrowing the city's biracial government and forever changing its legacy. But the victims' graves, like their stories, were lost to history until now. A new movement by the Third Person Project is reconciling the city's horrific past. Starting two years ago, the group began the painstaking process of locating the victims. And now Joshua Halsey is getting the proper burial he was never afforded. Joining us right now, co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign and author of the book, We Are Called to Be a Movement, Bishop William Barber II. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on this very important day. I mean, what does this moment mean to you? Well, Frederick, I'm from Eastern North Carolina, and this, I think, is even more than a day of healing. It's really a day of reflection, because 1898 was an insurrection. It was an insurrection caused by the fear of black and white fusion politics, progressive politics that was really growing in the South, had grown since the end of the Civil War, and was trying to provide education for all, labor rights for all, and equal protection under law for all. And racists said no. And this wasn't a few races, this was the government. This was the person that began, ended up becoming governor, Charles B. Acock, with the red shirts. It was the racist, um, uh, um, aggressive Democratic Party of that day against Lincoln Republicans. And they were claiming Frederick, that, that fusion politics and reconstruction politics were undermining America. They were lying about deficits. They refused to accept the election results of 1896. And for two years, they went all over the state to say, we must have a violent insurrection and then send that message out all over the country to say, this is how we take our country back. And make it mm. back. You're delivering the eulogy today. What will your message be? Well, in this sense, the eulogy has to be, why were the de did the deaths happen? Almost, uh, some say that the number of people that were killed in Massacre in Wilmington, in 1898, and by the way, they went out for white people as well, uh, was more people killed per, per capita than were killed on 9-11. Mm -hmm. But what I'm also going to talk about is how the blood of those people still speak to us today. And we got to remember this history, because look at the trends today, mm -hmm. the lies about voting, a racist insurrection, mm -hmm. an insurrection led, rooted in um, uh, cheating and lies and distortion. Look at how today there are attempts to block uh, living wages, block uh, child tax credit, block and, uh, uh, earned income tax credit, block family leave based on lies. I mean, they have a charismatic leader going all around the country today. They had a charismatic leader yes yesterday going all around spreading the lies. They took over the media back then they take the media, some parts of the media like Fox News and others are pushing out these lies today. So part of it is there's a scripture in the Bible that says the blood of Abel cries from the ground. And so I want to talk about what the blood of those who died violently then is still crying to us now mm -hmm. and trying to say to us, don't go down this road again, America. Don't do this again. Stand up against the lies. Stand up against the distortion. Be a progressive society. Try to care about everybody. Do not follow this because the end of it is terrible forms of violence that ultimately destroy democracy and destroy us all. Mm, pay attention to the frightening parallels. Uh, I mean, some of Joshua's descendants uh, spoke with CNN affiliate WECT on what they are feeling leading up to today's ceremony, and this is what they said. We're calling it a funeral, but there'll be no one there who knew Josh actually knew him. But what happened to him cannot be forgotten. We're honoring the people who hid in the swamps. We're honoring the people who never came back to their homes. Um, we're honoring so many ancestors along with our family, our blood. If a ceremony like today is really just the beginning, what are you hoping is next? Well, I love that word honoring because to honor people is not just to remember them and have the funeral, 
it is to remember what they stood for. You know, that day, Wilmington was the largest city in North Carolina. It was on its way to become Atlanta. It had the largest African-American population. It had a strong African-American paper. And black and white people were working together for fundamental change. And then there was this other element in North Carolina and all over the South. There's 1898 was the beginning of a lot of riots. In fact, there was a telegram sent after November 10th, 1898 said, this is how you put the Negro in their place and block Negro domination. This is how you stop fusion politics, black and white people working together. So we're gonna honor them, then we must challenge the vestiges of those things today. We must, we must hear their voices in the now. So I don't know if I'm going so much to bury Josh as to resurrect his memory in hopes that we hear the lessons of the past and we face the lies today. We face the policy racism today. We face the forces that are trying to divide us today. We face the insurrections of today. Because mm -hmm. the best form of honor and flattery is to do what others did while they were living. And, and Bishop, isn't it something that um, there are people who are hearing about this page in history for the first time, similar to how in recent years, many admitted to just learning of the Oklahoma Black Wall Street massacre for the first time. Why is America still learning about its history? Well, that, that again is part of it. Why are we still learning about the history? And then why do we get so mad when some people get so mad when these things come up? There's been so much attempt to hide the ugly history of systemic racism and, 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 and violence. There was, a, for years, nobody really knew about, reported on, it wasn't in our textbooks uh, about this. So much of this violence is hidden. And that's why that we, could, we continue to repeat that, because we've not had an honest reckoning with the history, and not just what happened to individuals, but I want your listeners to understand, this was a two-year strategic plan that was laid out from 1896 to by those who lost the election and refused to accept it. And they saw unity, black and white people coming together mm. as a problem, as, as being anti-American, as, mm. as a threat. And it ended up getting all the way into the White House when Woodrow Wilson was there and he played Birth of a Nation in the White House, which was the glorification mm. of the Klan and the, and the, 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 the uh, diminishing of Reconstruction mm -hmm. politics, black and white people working together. We need to recover this history, but not just for history's sake, so that we can see it coming at us. We can know what's happening in the present uh, reality, particularly when we see it activated in policy. Mm -hmm. The policy and the lies always uh, are, 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 are first, and then comes the violence and the destruction. Mm. Oh, Bishop uh, William Barber, uh, thank you so much for being with us today and helping us to understand and, and see what it is you're doing today to help honor so many who um, have not been honored before. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be right back.